So we honor the mothers, the mothers that, is, that they received from you the gift of life. And they can bring to the world children under the covenant of the families that you brought to humans the opportunity to reproduce and have more children of yours. Father, forgive our sins, and may we focus in Christ Jesus, not only today, but every day of our lives. And for today, for the, the moms in this church, we ask you, Lord, bless them and keep them in your ways for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please open our Bible, Romans 7, verse 24 and 25, and that will be the last two verses on this chapter. And we are studying today and conclude today the, the Romans 7. If for some reason, if somebody is watching online, or if you that here miss any of the sermons on Romans 7, they are, they've been uploaded on YouTube. Tiago has been doing that. Thank you so much, Tiago, for your hard work on that. It's on Sermon Audio. So please, those are free channels for you. Uh, the sermon audio, the church space, so you can have it. So if you miss any of the sermons and you want to go over as we conclude today, please feel free to do it, do, to do so. If you have any questions, contact our, our, um, our, um, uh, um, our contact info information on Facebook or, or, uh, or uh, YouTube, any of those, Google, and somebody will help you and will guide you through. Amen. You can also always call to the church number and we'll be happy to serve you. Amen. Romans 7 verse 24 and 25 says, What a wretched man I am, am I? A man I am. Who will rescue me from the body of the death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature, a slave of the law of sin. You may be seated. Just right before we sing, I want to bring you a little story and a little, little illustration that are going to help us in the message. You know those moments that when you're home and, you, um, and uh, if you are a husband, your, your wife is really upset with you and she's not talking to you. So you go to the kitchen and you tie it up every, every container that you can as much as you can. So eventually she will have to ask you, can you please open this for me? And uh, please keep in mind that moment as well when you go, you need to find the butter in the refrigerator and you can't find it. And it's right in front of your eyes and you're going to have to ask your wife, can you please tell me where the butter is? So that's how it works in a marriage, right? So keep this in mind. This is a small illustration. We don't do this at home. Totally not. We not, we not do this at home at all. Well, actually, we don't. But, we, uh, but it's, a, it's just a small illustration that's going to help us to understand how we depend in one another and how we depend on the Holy Spirit on our because of our sinful nature amen so uh, let's sing to the lord let's sing with joy and uh, may the joy of salvation be in our hearts continuously and um, and after we sing we go back uh to this text so keep your bible there romans 7 verse 24 and 25 um very important uh, way that paul uh, concludes this this message about the law and how our sinful nature fights against the law amen so let's sing to the lord amen Amen. Goodness of God. Amen. Our, ch our children are one of the signs of the goodness of God. And uh, His wisdom to raise our children, to teach us through His word, is another sign of goodness of God. We could not do this job without Him. Amen. Risen children is is hard. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God And all my life you have been 
being faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, why you sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest nights You are close like no other I know you as a father I know you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. Oh, all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful, man. And all my life you have been so, so good. We have sing of the goodness of God and all my life you have been faithful Amen. and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered. It's a privilege to be called a child of God Amen. because when we realize that we became children of God, it's impossible not to realize how the goodness of God about among of our lives because everything we go, whatever we go, the things that we go through, we know God is with us Amen. and that is a privilege. Imagine God call you. And he's with you. Amen. So the next end that we are singing is, is something that I like a lot because it says, You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. Amen. This, this song is specific to the Lord. Nothing about us. All about him. Amen. You deserve the glory and the honor 
Lord, I lift your hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, I lift your hands in worship as we lift your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, you deserve the glory, amen, Jesus, and the Lord, I lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, for you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen. There is no one like him. Praise his Lord. Praise be his Lord forever. Amen. Let's worship the Lord and praise the Lord in all circumstances. He is good. I think it's very easy for us to come on a Sunday morning like today and come to worship, especially after the fellowship that we had. Amen. We are, we are such, a, such a wonderful time. And it's so good when we come to the house of the Lord and we come with time, like spending time with one another, right? And I know some of you are here since 7.30 this morning. It's 12.15. You're going to stay for another, at least another 45 minutes. And it, it, it's such wonderful when we dedicate time to the Lord. Amen. Dedicate time to the Lord in worship. With a thankful heart. And it's not just because we come here and you know what, for the morning I, I don't think about my problems, I don't think about, about my, my situations. And I'm going to, as I said last week, I'm going to charge my batteries, go back home. No, that's not what it is. It's a time that we separate because He's good. And His goodness stay out on our hearts forever. And we, 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 we are in Him. And we are in Him not just for today, not just, just for this day, not just for this life, but for eternity. Amen. So worship His name. Never forget that. Your soul is in the hands of your Lord, the one that reigns over the world, over the universe, because he's God. And he's, he's not new in this thing, right? He's just started a new position. No. He's king and he's Lord and he's God from ever and forever. He never stops. He's eternal God. He doesn't depend on anybody. And we do. We depend on one another, right? We depend this morning, we men experience what is depending in one another to prepare a breakfast. And let me tell you, it is scary. <laughs> but we made it. And we depend in one another. Amen? And it worked out. And we always depend in one another. Amen? Let's go back to God's word. Please open, or open a Bible, Bible or keep it open. Romans 7, verse 24 and 25. Amen? 
This is a wonderful verse. It is a wonderful way that Paul ends this chapter. And it's so much that we learn from this chapter about the law and our sinful nature and how we fight one against the other and how we have to uh, um, uh, deal with our sinful nature and God's law, which are so different, right? Two different, two totally different things. God's law is all about holiness and our, our sinful nature, our nature is all about sin, right? So please stand for God's word, Romans 7, verse 24 and 25, and says, What a wretched, wretched man I am, who will rescue me from the body of death. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself, in, a mind, in my mind, I'm a slave of, to God's law, but in the sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. Let's pray. Father, please help us understand your word and to apply it to our lives so we may live for your glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. After a few uh, Lord's Day that we were thinking and put our thoughts in how our sinful nature is and how God wants us to obey uh, his law and we understand the, the meaning of, uh, and the purpose of the law and the purpose of the law is uh, uh, as, as, as two aspects. The first one is to show us how sinful we are. Amen. So he shows us that we deserve condemnation, we deserve hell. And the second part... And the second, the, the, the second uh, um, purpose of the law, it's that if we desire the law of the Lord, it's because our heart has been uh, uh, changed by the Holy Spirit. So if we, you have, you must desire God's law. So it's not just obeying to be saved. That doesn't work. Never worked. Nobody was able to obey God's law and uh, earn salvation by it. That doesn't work that way. Why? Because we have a sinful nature and we will not have a desire for. But when we are in Christ, we look to the law of the Lord and we want to obey Him with a thankful heart. It's like we do that not because we're going to earn points for heaven, right? It, it, it's, it's, it's so much. right? We were playing the, the Bible trivia there, right? And you make points. Right, and if you make this amount of points, you won a flower, right? And, and that's what Irma Maria did. She put the points all together, and she won, right? So we, we, it, it's salvation is not like that. You, you don't, you don't, you don't write down points, right? We don't have a period of writing the points, right? It, it, you just, you just have. It, it's by grace and grace alone, and Christ and Christ alone. But once that you ha are saved, you want to show your gratitude and your heart changed towards to the Lord, and that's how you have a desire to obey God's law. This must be very clear in our mind, otherwise we will take the glory from God from sal in salvation to us. We bring it to us, and it's not about us, it's not on, on our own, it's a work of God, and it has all glory goes to God. Amen? So that's very clear. We learned about this the last, the last past weeks, that we were on this, and now Paul reached this point in, in the text, and he says, what a, what a wretched, wretched man and I am. And we even have a song, right? In English, the Portuguese is not exactly, which is amazing grace, an amazing grace. And it mentioned clearly this part of the verse that says, what a wretched man I am. And that's what we are. And he saved us. Amen? And, and it's so important that Paul understands this, and he says this clearly. Now, we are in a society that, that, that nobody wants to hear this. Everybody thinks a lot of themselves. We are in a society that people think they are good. And even worse, they teach little children and explain to little children how they have to find something good in them. And we tell little children that you can do it. You, you can be whatever you want. You, 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 you have the power in yourself. You just don't, don't, don't bound out to anything. And you can. And we encourage this sinful nature. And that's what we do. We encourage sinful nature in little children. And they grow up going to schools, thinking a lot about themselves. This self-esteem kind of thing that rises up so much to a point they cannot identify a sinful nature. They don't know they are no good before God. They have nothing good. They are miserable people. Like uh, um, they are wretched people. 
Miserable will be the translation from Portuguese. It was not the same meaning in English. So they are wretched people, and they're born with a sinful nature, and everything they do is not pleased to the Lord unless Christ changed their lives. So we've been encouraging. We encourage the kids since a very young age. They're good. They can do it. So they grow up. They go to school. They can do it. They go to college. They can do it. They have something good in them. They keep finding something good. And then we have these people trying to find themselves. And my answer to that is buy a GPS. You will always know where you are. You need to find myself. So they go to these places to find themselves. And then they find, what did they find? How can they find themselves? The Bible is very clear. What a wretched man. That's what you are. You don't need to find that. It's right there. It's, the Bible says what it is. He didn't start that way when God created man. And that's why we, on, on the, we're always studying about uh, uh, the Christian worldview. Uh, when we start the youth group, I started with the Christian worldview. Uh, uh, the classes that Ellen and Maribel are attending, we go into to Christmas, uh, to Christian worldview because it's so important for us to understand creation. You cannot jump to redemption without understanding creation. You cannot never understand redemption if you don't understand the fall. So what we start is how God created everything and he created everything to his own glory. So Adam, in the first stage, he was not a wretched man. He became after the fall. That's why, they, that's why Adam needed a savior. Who was Adam's savior? The same that you, that your savior is. Jesus Christ. Amen. By faith, Hebrews 11, they were ex waiting for something to come. For us, he came already. Amen. But the same way. There's no way, uh, uh, a lot of people believe that God had two ways to save people. One time, one way was in the Old Testament and another way is in the New Testament. That, that's a lie. Nobody can save a part of Jesus Christ. They were saved in the faith that, that what was about to come and we are saved for the faith, uh, faith of whatever, whatever, what happened already. And there is other people believing that there is two kinds of salvation, one for the Jewish and another one for the Gentiles. That's another lie. Jesus is the only Savior. Period. It's no other ways. There's no other ways to Jesus. It's only one way to God. It's only one way. Jesus Christ. I'm the Lord. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. That's what Jesus said. So it's no other way. It's the cross is the way. The empty tomb is the hope. So Jesus, it's the Savior. So what, what we need to know is that we are, all are, in our sinful nature, in our, in our status after the fall, wretched, wretched people. You're not a good person. You're not capable of anything. There is nothing inside of you that you need to find. You don't need to find yourself. You don't need to be encouraged every five minutes to do something. And this is one of the things that gets me really annoyed on these Christian radios. They keep encouraging you for something. Well, what else could encourage you that the fact that you've been a wretched person, Jesus Christ, died for your sins? What else do you need? What, else, what do you need more? I don't need a radio station to tell me every five minutes and encourage me every five minutes and positive encouragement. Love thing. I don't need that. I'm saved by grace and grace alone. In Christ and Christ alone. I, my, he holds my life for eternity. That's, that's not enough. And then, and then we have this uh, Christian psychology thing. That you have to go to this person which is a Christian supposedly. But it's not. Because it's the psychology and that's not Christianity. They don't match. That is going to tell you how you're going to have to live your life and believe in yourself. Do not believe in yourself because your heart is so deceiving, says Scripture. So it's nothing good to you to find in yourself. No, but I have to because I need this encouragement. And I feel so good when I hear this person. And this, it's, it's interesting because lately we don't have uh, pastors anymore. We have life coach. And, and, and let me tell you, let me tell you this very clearly. I love that. I love this idea that these people call themselves life coaches and no longer pastors. I love that because they're not pastors at all, so that people don't confuse me. I don't think you ever will leave this room and say this, that one there, that was a very good life coach. I don't think you're going to ever say that, and I hope you will never say that. And if, I will, if you ever say that, I hope you're wrong. 
Because I'm not here to be a life coach. I'm here to tell you God's word. And what God's word tells, it's the, there you are, a wretched person. And when you hear to this and you know this, you will know that you need help. Let's go back to the illustration that I present to you in the beginning of service. When your wife is very upset with you and you go to the, the kitchen and you, 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 you lock every uh, thing that you can, so she, she, can, she needs to help, ask you for help. And she was like, hey, honey, can you please? And you go like, how are you talking to me now, huh? How's it going, huh? And you say, or, or, or you, if you were, uh, if you were uh, and, and again, a man, you go to the refrigerator, you need to find the butter, and you can't find the butter. It's right there, but you don't see it because you're a man. That's what men do, right? Yesterday, I tried my best to do eggs for people at home. I'm a disaster in the kitchen. As everybody knows, the alarm went off. It was a, it was a, a, a disaster. That's why today we ask him. Jeff to do it because if depend on me it will never happen and I was trying to do an egg and he missed it totally missed it right totally missed it I don't know how I don't know how that thing falls in that little circle pan I, I mean I, it never falls in so it falls on, on the stove it was a disaster the alarm went off and, and I was trying to I, and I tried to do it again and I I put the eggs back in the refrigerator right and now I need another egg this is so true I need another egg I opened the same refrigerator where I just put it like two minutes before and I couldn't find the eggs at all at all I think the eggs disappear. And I look, 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 and I close the refrigerator, I look back, I look back, and I open, and it was right there. So, because that, I'm a guy, that's what guys do. We can't do anything. So it depends on the wife, right? But I was trying to have, to cook breakfast without my wife knowing, with alarms on. Got it? Without her knowing. With alarms on. And I, and so I had to find the eggs myself, and I had a problem, right? I, I need help. I was depending. I need help. Somebody got to help me find these this eggs, right? Why? Because I know I'm not good on that. When I go to the kitchen, I know for a fact that something will go wrong. Why? Because I can't do it. So I need help. Right? That's exactly how we are when we understand that we are wretched people. Unless you understand this, you will never turn to Christ. You may turn partially, partially to Christ. That's why a lot of people have Christ as the helper, not the Savior, not the Lord. You will help me to go through my things. You help me to go through my marriage. That's a, a wrong approach. You know that's a wrong approach? You must leave your marriage for the glory of God. Yes, you will help you. But not to go through. You help you on it, in it, all the time for the glory of his name. Amen. It's a totally different approach. You go like, oh, oh, I, need, I need Jesus to help me tomorrow at my work. Because I have a project tomorrow and I need him to, to help. Hey, um, don't take this as a personal thing. I'm, I'm just talking, right? Uh, we have a, oh, like you have a project tomorrow. Let's think of work. And you go like, I help Jesus to help me in this project. So Jesus, from 8 to 5, can you please help me here? But by 5 o'clock, just give me a break, right? Because I got my own things to do. A lot of people think this way. They may not do it, and they, may not, they may not say it, but they think this way. That's not Jesus from scriptures. That's not Jesus as Lord. That's not the Savior. No, a wretched person will understand that everything that he will do by himself will not be for God, will be no worth whatsoever. He doesn't need God to help him go through this or the other aspect of life. They want to live a life of obedience for the glory of God. So they say, I am a wretched person. I need God to change me, to work on me on such a way that he will be my only hope because he is your only hope. There is nothing you can do apart of God. We have a sinful nature that will drag us all the time to do all, uh, every time the same mistake, the same sin. And we have to find a way to walk away from it. But if you try, even if you try, and you should try, you should make plans. If you know your weakness, do you know your weakness? Of course you do. What are you fighting against sin in this moment? What is your fight against sin? Which kind of sin? You must know that. That's very important. If you don't know what kind of sin you have to fight back, at this moment, you have a serious problem. And what you need is to repent. You need to believe. You need to be saved. Because a saved person knows exactly 
what kind of sin he's about to commit if he's not by God's grace. A saved person knows how wretched it is, is and what he has to be aware of. This is so clear in scripture, it's so clear. The Holy Spirit will show you every single day what you need and you just have to work that out. So, if you are sitting here or you are listening at home and you know your sinful nature and you know what you have to walk away from, make a plan. But understand, you will not going to be able to, to execute it, to have victory, unless the Holy Spirit works in your life and help and, and change you. Because your sinful nature will going to drag you to that over and over again. And a lot of times we have a very, we have a hard, very hard problem to be victorious over sin, over temptation. And why is that? Because we are not very aware that we cannot do things on our own. You cannot do anything apart of Christ. You may know what's right and wrong. You may, you may for a time even, even dwell with that and, and, and fight that. And go like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm battle it and say, no, I, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But sooner or later, you're going to fall on that sin unless the Holy Spirit will work in your life and shows you Christ every time, all the time. And you will live for God's glory. And you have victory over sin because Jesus Christ has a, a, a conquered victory in the cross. So it's not our victory. It's about him. It's for his glory. A life of a Christian, or of a, a Christian person, has a life that is con constantly fighting against sin, is constantly uh, 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 battling, but is also winning all the time. Over and over and over again. Because nothing can separate him from the love of Christ that is in his heart. And he wants to live a victorious life. So, so, so uh, uh, Paul, on verse 24, the second part says, Who will rescue me from this body of death? We, we saw this before. We saw this last week, right? You have a sinful nature. We're always going to drag you out of, of God, away from God all the time, trying to bring you out, trying to, to move you away from what God wants you to do. You want to you wanna do what's right. And Paul was saying last week, I won't know what's right. I know what I have to do, but I can't. That's what Paul said last week, right? That's what we learned from, from, from the scriptures last week. The verses before. I think it was 18 to 23. And, and, and if, you, if you want to hear, please, uh, go, uh, again, as I said before, go online and, and, and listen to it. Not now, though, when, when the service ends. And, and you, you, you will see that that's what Paul was saying. I know what's right. I know what I have to do, but I can't. And now he, he, he cries out and he says, who will rescue me from this body of dead? Who will rescue? For you to cry out to, to Christ this way, you have to know how wretched you are. You have to know who you are. You have to understand that you deserve a, a, a condemnation. So stop telling everybody they're good or they can, or stop telling everybody they have to find themselves or, or stop this psychology, life coach idea about and, and mixing Christianity with worldly ideas. We have to stop that. That's wrong. Everybody out there needs to know they are wretched. You need to know. You need to be aware of it. It's no value on you whatsoever. Doesn't matter what people say. Doesn't matter what people think. Stop searching inside for something good. It's not coming out because it doesn't exist. Stop following your heart. Do whatever makes you happy. That's another thing that's wrong. You don't know what makes you happy. You have no idea. You need Christ to show you. The true happiness is doing God's will. You need, a, you need a new heart to understand that. So he says, who will rescue me? What's the answer? Who will rescue you? Who will rescue you for eternity? Who will give you peace for eternity? And the answer is Jesus Christ. And he says this, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus will give you peace for eternity. He will rescue out of the, the battle you have with, 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 your, with your sinful nature. One day, and we have even a song. We just sing the song, right? One day, it was last week, right? We sing the song. One day, one day we'll be in heaven. One day, one day everything will, will stop. All this fighting against sin will stop. You will be with your king, your lord forever. 
and you want to be free from that body of death. What that means? And a lot of people go like, oh, it means I will never die again. That's true. It means I will have no sickness. It's true too. Is that what worries you? Is that what really bothers you? You will say, oh, I will, not, I will no longer have bills to pay. Is that what's actually important? You know what that means? It means you no longer will have the capability to sin. You know how important that is? You're going to be set free from that body of that means you can no longer sin against your Lord and Savior. There is no fight against sin anymore because it's no longer there. What is the difference between heaven and earth? What is the big difference between there and here? The Lord of heavens and earth is the same. Is the Lord of heavens and earth. It's right there. Is the king. Who rules the world is God. Yes, there is a lot of sinful out there. Yes, there's a lot of evil that God allowed to, to, to remain for a time. But he's still God. But in heaven, his kingdom is a kingdom of peace and holiness. And nothing evil will enter there. So you need a new heart to enter to the king and on the kingdom of heaven. Do you understand that? Why church is important? Why attending church is important? Why are you here on a Sunday morning? Why are you here? And, and, and I want you to think about it because you can be in so many different places this morning, could you? It is important, right? You know what? If you are, if you are having... You had breakfast in church today, right? But if you were having breakfast in someplace else, they're going to try to hold you there, right? They're going to try to hold you there and, 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 and serve you very well because they want you to come back, right? Because it's always the option for you to go someplace else. Am I right? Yeah, you go to this diner and then the next week you can say, you know what, I'm going to another diner. I'm going to try that. So why are you here this morning? I want you to understand this. What, what is the difference? It's, this is the kingdom of God. And you come, to the, you come to the house of the Lord to worship and to praise the one that you will be with him forever in eternity. So it's no competition. Do you understand that? This is no competition. This is God's kingdom. This is no competition. You come to serve the Lord because of the Lord himself. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So when you come to the house of the Lord, you are experiencing a little bit of heaven. It's not heaven yet because you are coming in with your sinful nature on a sinful world. But it's a, 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 moment, a special moment when wretched people come together and say, I am no good whatsoever. When you go to your workplace, it's only one person, if it's not you, somebody else, that thinks he's better than the others, isn't it? It's only one person that thinks he's the king of the place. He's always the best employee, right? He wants to be the best. And he's, he's so annoying, right? And sometimes usually is the person that is actually not, right? If we don't have this here, you know why we don't have this here? I mean, we cannot have this here. It's actually watch yourself because it cannot happen here. Why? You know why? Because when we walk on this door, we all wretched people. Nobody's good. Younger, older, doesn't matter. We're all wretched people. We're all here because we need a Savior that is not in us. I can never say to you, look inside yourself. Is something good in the you? And you cannot say it to me either because you know it's not. And you're not going to lie. And we cannot come here, show more to one another because we're all wretched people. Because when Paul thinks this way, can you think better of yourself? Compare yourself to Paul. The man that, that was called as the last apostle, the man that wrote so much of the scriptures, he, he wrote the book of Romans, that we, for the rest of our lives, will keep exploring and keep having more to learn from. 
And there was Paul. And he says, what a wretched man I am. So when you walk in this door, you come as a wretched person that was saved by grace. And you come to worship the one that saved you. That's why the church is beautiful. The church is beautiful every day. And we don't get tired of church. We don't get tired of getting together on the Lord's Day. We don't get tired. That's why we come on Wednesday, we come on Fridays, we come all the time. Why? Because it's so wonderful to be with one another, a, a group of wretched people that knows exactly who they are. And they come to worship and say, thank you, Jesus, for my salvation. We want to, we want to serve you. That's why we sing to the Lord. We don't sing to, we, we sing to one another in a way that we encourage one another to sing and the congregational singing is all about that. But we're not performing here. We are wretched people. We don't need to hear like, yo, you can do it, you can do it. Be encouraged. Find yourself. You deserve it. No, the, you deserve it. it. It's even better, right? I mean, better, worst. You deserve it. Be careful with that, those kind of things. Because we deserve zero from God. So Paul says, so then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. So Paul says, I am in my mind, I'm a slave to God's law, I know God's law, but my, my bodies keep trying to drag me. So in the conclusion, Paul is saying, I need help. I am desperate for help. I need Christ. So, so listen, it's not only that you need Christ one time in your life to save you. You continuously need him to stop sinning against God. In your struggles, in your battles with sin, never think that you can overcome. You cannot. Again, if you know what leads you to sin, stay away. But it's not enough. You need Christ. You need Jesus Christ to bring you to, to the point that you desperately need him, understand that you need him, so you can walk in victory. I, I don't know how many of you read the confession, Augustine's Confessions. Augustine's Confessions this is a wonderful book, heavy to read, very hard to read. But if you have, like, if you... A very good reader, please read it. And there's so many things that, uh, that, that we learn from that. He's, he's, he's pouring his heart out, like, like confessing sins. That's why he calls Augustine's confessions. And one of them is that he, on an old age, on, on, on adult age he was uh, remind, be reminded that as a, as a young kid, as a little kid, he stole uh, pear, pear, I always say pears, pears, pairs from uh, from the neighbors and that was a sin if it was on today's days we'll say oh come on that's just, nobody cares about that but there was a sin it was that was stealing and on the book it says that and it says he confessed that kind of sins and he said lord help me Forgive my sin. I, I'm so wretched. I, I, even as a young kid, I was already robbing and, 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 and fruits from my neighbor's yard. And, and today, like you probably did, did that when you were a kid. It depends where you grew up. You probably did. You went to the neighbor's yard and it was apples and you stole apples or oranges. It depends. Whatever you were, were raised. And today, we don't, we don't think about that. It's not a sin. It is a sin. The Bible says, do not steal. So August, Augustine was, was going down on his heart before the Lord and asking the Lord to forgive him sins like that. Why do we need to do that? Because all the time we do this kind of prayer, right? We, we, we pray uh, uh, in church and we pray for one another. And when on the first Wednesday of the month when we pray, you know, we made a list of, of requests from before the Lord. And that's biblical. We should present our requests. And usually in the end, I, I'm praying right there and I have the list in front of me and I have one eye open because I want to make sure I don't miss any of your requests. I want to pray for you. And that's beautiful. Usually we, do a lot of, no, we don't do a lot of confessions of sins, which is biblical. We should do it. But usually you don't go to describe your sin in public. You don't feel comfortable to that. And I don't know how far, how, how important that will be and maybe will not be even a, a good thing. But when you are alone at home, or if you go to a place that you can be alone, 
pray and confess your sins before the Lord and call your sins by name. Let the Holy Spirit show you how wretched you are. Why is that important? Why that matters? Because usually I'm pretty sure you go, you go home after a, a day of work and you sin here and there and you go home and you pray something like this, Lord, I'm so thankful for today's day. Thank you so much for keeping me, for the food that I ate, for the for the for everything and give me a good night of rest and please forgive me all my sins and that's it and you go to bed and you sleep you maybe pray more things than that but it, pretty much like forgive all my sins and I'm not saying that you should not say forgive all my sins and that we, we know from history that a godly man's pray forgive me for the sins that I committed without even knowing right and that's important that you ask the Lord to forgive all your sins but what about starting telling to the Lord what he already knows. So in other words, why not start telling to yourself what are your sins? So you understand how wretched you are. Lord, forgive me because this morning I did this, this, and this, and I spoke this and this way, and in my mind was this and this thought, and I'm so wretched. Do it to a point that you understand how bad you can be and how wrong you are and how desperately you need a savior pray like that and confess your sins until you sink in that so you have your mind on that sinking so deep down that brings you down you see while society is telling you and trying to lift you up the lord shows us on romans 7 verse 24 paul says what a wretched man i am you have to understand this while the world is trying to lift you up and accommodate your sinful nature the bible is telling you the opposite go down confessing your sins on a way that you understand you are a miserable you you have nothing you are so bad so when you live you've been lifted up you know you are being lifted up, up by the Holy Spirit in forgiveness of sins by the only one that can save you and can forgive your sins. Amen. We have to stop to this accommodating our lives and let the world tell us what to do. We have to go to scriptures and, and go down in prayer and say, Lord, help me. Look what I did, Lord. How could I possibly, being a Christian, being a savior, in my case, being a pastor, and have this kind of thought, forgive me, Lord. And we have to repeat that, that confession and that, 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 that prayer until when you feel the forgiveness, you know it came from the Lord and it was not something that you just told yourself, oh, is everything okay? This kind of prayer that we do, Lord, forgive me because I shouldn't have done that. But that person, seriously, Lord, can you just save that person so the person stop bothering me? Did he ever pray this? I know people that did that. Lord, can you please save my... And sometimes my, my wife, my, my husband, I hear that. So I can have some peace. But how kind of selfish, wrong prayer is that? Lord, save my boss so I can have a raise. Pretty much, right? So why are you praying for that person to be saved? So that person is the problem that why you, you sin? Lord, forgi Lord, forgive me because I yell my neighbor, but can you please save him so he stops bothering me? What kind of prayer is this? So you, 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 are you asking forgiveness? No, I don't think so because you're blaming the neighbor. And are you asking the neighbor to be saved for, you, for the glory of God or for your own well? You understand how, how, how we can be so deceiving in our thoughts, in our prayers? What about praying to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me because I did this, 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 and this. Because myself, myself, myself. Because me, me, me. I'm the problem here. This is my sin. Nobody else's. When you confess your sins to the Lord, stop mentioning other people. It's your fault alone. When I confess my sins, I have to understand it's my fault alone. Why? Because I'm a wretched person. That's why I need a Savior. That's why I need Lord, the Lord. So when we understand this and we let it clearly come to our mind and our heart and we know and we feel the pain of being a sinner, 
It's on that moment that Jesus Christ will bring us out of it. The Holy Spirit working in our life. And it, our heart will be filled of peace. The peace of God. And that's when the blame of that sin will move. And listen to this please. When you deep down in prayer, confession your sins. When the guilt, the blame of that sin will be transferred for you from your heart to the cross of Jesus Christ is when you are forgiven. And from that moment on, you'll do the best you can to never, to never sin again. But you will know, you will lift, you will, you will come out of that prayer knowing that only by the power of the Holy Spirit you can stop committing that sin. You know why we repeat sin so much? Sometimes we repeat the same sin. Because first of all, you don't have a clear understanding of how sinful that was, that what you did. The second is because you're not depending on the Holy Spirit to don't sin no more. You are not depending on the Holy Spirit to don't sin no more. To say, Lord, I want to stop doing this. I want to go do, I, I want to have a different life. I don't want to commit the sin anymore. I need your forgiveness. I have no hope in me. We have a hard time on these days. With all these people believing in so many things and the world telling us. On this on this Lord's Day in the morning, you know how many people, how many church attendees we have around the world? I have no idea. It's so many people going to church. And I'm not even talking. I don't even talk about other religions, or people that claim to be Christians. They go to church so many this morning. And I can tell you, I can tell you, and this is not my percentage. 90% of these people, it was, it was actually 95% of these people, that was the percentage that I read, of like calculating, will hearing an encouraged message for them to keep going on their sin and feel good about themselves. And only 5% will hear, you are a wretched person and unless you turn to Christ, you are going to hell. This is what's, is what's going on out there, brothers and sisters. May, Lord, may the Lord have mercy of us. You, you want to have a victorious life in Christ? No, you are a wretched person. You want to live for God's glory? Know that you depend on the Holy Spirit. Amen. You want to live in eternity? Turn yourself to Christ. Amen. He's the only Savior is the only Lord, is the only one that will forgive sins, is the only one who will give you the victorious life. You will never conquer victory over sin, over the devil, over the enemy, if you will not depend entirely in the Holy Spirit. There is nothing good in you. You're not a good person. You don't do good deeds. Don't feel good about yourself. But if you are in Christ, oh, brother and sister, if you are in Christ, you will live for the glory of God. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. He will show you where the sin is and you will walk away. He will, your sinful nature will keep trying to drag you to the sin. But the Holy Spirit is bringing you out and he's a lot more powerful than yourself. And you will surrender to him and you will live for the glory of God and will never sin. And when you sin, if it happens that you sin, you will do the same. You will confess and you ask the Lord, Lord, show me my sin instead of finding excuses. You will never try to find an excuse. You will say, Lord, show me. Let me pray until I understand what I did. With no excuses. And you will be lifted up again from that prayer, but again by the Holy Spirit. And again, you will walk in faith. This is the life of a Christian. A victorious life. It's not dictated by the world. It doesn't need to do, do, do psychology. You will hate psychology. A Christian will never surrender to that kind of silliness. You will never want to hear, you are good and you're going to do great things. No. You will say, no, I'm a wretched person and unless God does a great thing, my life is no, is, is, is no value on it. A Christian life a Christian person depends on the Holy Spirit and will live a life for the glory of God. We have joy in Christ. And we will say, and every time somebody says, oh, you did so great, he knows that it was not him. He knows it was Christ. 
He knows the glory goes to Christ. Brothers and sisters, God designed a beautiful, victorious life for every believer. Jesus died for our, in our place for us to live a victorious life because we couldn't. He conquered victory in the cross. Do you understand that? Victory over dead. So that sin that is bothering when it's troubling you, Christ already won against it. He has already victory against it. Just, just go to him. Go to the one that can. Go to the one that can save you. Not only for eternity, can save you now from sin, from yourself, for yourself. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And he will give you victory and peace. Turn to Christ today. But you said, Pastor, you do not understand I'm already saved. Keep turning to Christ today. You still need it. You still have your sinful nature. You're still going to sin against God unless God stops you. Turn to Christ today. But if you're not saved, if after this message you say, you say, well, I'm not fighting sin whatsoever. I, I'm very good. I'm a very good person. I'll pray for you. And I'll pray for God to show you how wretched you are. So you, want, you will turn to him desperately, asking the Lord to help you. May God bless you. And may God show you Christ today. Let's pray together. Lord, we come before thee in the name of Jesus. There is no hope in us. And we are so thankful that you show us there is no hope in us. So we don't have to search or do an inner search or anything, any silly thing like that. So thank you, Lord, because you show us that we are wretched people, that as a wretched people, we are turning to you, and we need to turn to you. Father, we ask you, Lord, that you may forgive our sins. Help us, Lord, today when we go home to confess our sins. Confess before the, before the cross so we may conquer victory. Not our victory, the victory of Jesus Christ on the cross over sin and over death. Father, may the hope of eternal, eternity be in our mind and be reminded to us on a way that we live for the glory of Thee alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To God, to God only wise be glory to Jesus Christ forever.